I want to speak also to the transdiagnostic therapeutic potential of psychedelic assisted therapies. Because as I've mentioned, in the acute state, when a psychedelic is present, we have this brain environment of increased neuroplasticity, increased entropic brain activity, more possible connections happening. But we also have correlated uh, changes in behavior. So uh, increased rates of learning, um, reversal learning, that fear instinction extinction process, essentially rewiring and reconnecting the configuration of past memories, traumas, belief systems, ways that we relate to ourselves that may be very negative or critical and contributing to negative cognitions that are part of perpetuating many different mental health conditions, including substance use disorders, depression, anxiety, the full spectrum. And then, um, there's the subjective psychedelic effects as well. So all of these brain behavior and subjective effects are part of the acute state that relate to long-term changes or longer-term changes. And uh, one of the longer-term changes that can arise and that we want to really enhance and promote from what we're learning about psychedelic-assisted therapy is psychological flexibility. So psychological flexibility is becoming more well-known as an important transdiagnostic factor for mental wellness. So its um, opposite psychological rigidity is also known to be a factor, a transdiagnostic factor that can contribute to mental illness. So um, this increased psychological flexibility that's possible from what arises in the acute state under psychedelics is a really powerful transdiagnostic uh, factor for the therapeutic potential of psychedelic assisted therapy and likely relates to why when, even when a person is in a research study for a specific indication, maybe substance use disorder and takes a psychedelic medicine in a therapeutic protocol, they don't just quit the substance of choice. There's all kinds of other health behavior changes, changes in how they relate to themselves, their environment, and um, what they wanna do, beliefs, values, that they wanna change that have been documented in research that change. And so it's, it's less specific to a specific symptom and more about um, how the effects of these medicines in the optimized setting and context can really promote general well being, well being that can actually um, transcend some of these more rigid li lists and labels of specific mental pathologies. We also see increases in cognitive flexibility, which is slightly different, as well as increases in mindfulness. And mindfulness is this ability to pay attention on purpose in the present moment. And mindfulness is also linked with psychological flexibility. The two are quite intricately linked. And we see that psychedelics can really enhance these longer term change factors that are positive when we think about well being in general. Um, one of the things that will perpetuate mental illness and perpetuate a more rigid psychology is this factor of experiential avoidance. This problem of not wanting to, understandably, um, based on people's historic um, lives uh, prior to the um, a mental illness manifesting, but this problem of having a difficulty that staying in contact with distressing internal experiences, like distressing thoughts, um, memories, distressing emotions and body sensations. And we might even see sort of looping there as um, maybe the body sensations and emotions are distressing. And then there's a looping of thoughts that could also be considered distressing, um, which we would call rumination. So getting it's caught in patterns of thinking that are also maladaptive. And um, so attempting to control or avoid experiencing anything in the realm of our thoughts, emotions, body sensations has to do with this problem of experiential avoidance. And if you think about, you know, this um, kind of analogy 
of um, an animal in captivity with a certain cage around it. And they grow up in this cage with specific dimensions and that's their environment. And suddenly you take the cage away and they keep pacing in the same cage because this is what is known. And um, anything outside the realm of the known might be threatening, um, might be disturbing. Um, and also that cage in this analogy is created by we could think of that created by the things that a person is attempting to avoid when, when in the process of experiential avoidance. So we're creating this kind of cage for ourselves that we can't uh, see out of. And uh, so this is known transdiagnostic marker of psychopathology that has to do with psychological rigidity. Um, it's known in anxiety panic, depression, bipolar disorder, self-harm and suicide, obsessive compulsive disorder, substance abuse, post-traumatic stress, um, other conditions like trichotillomania, phobias, um, across the different uh, categories in the DSM. So um, it's, I think, really interesting to think about the mechanisms of psychedelics in this context, because we know that psychedelics, they disrupt our normal patterns of how we think and relate, um, looking back to that rebus model and actually really enhance the conditions for increased psychological flexibility. And, and as I was just speaking to, can really support and promote approaching rather than avoiding other otherwise or hitherto um, uh, perceived as uh, or even unconsciously avoided uh, negative um, or difficult or challenging uh, thoughts, emotions, and body sensations. So this increase in openness, turning towards, accepting, and interacting with and engaging with content that has been otherwise kept out of a person's conscious awareness and experience, we can understand it can be very influential in a supportive environment and supportive therapeutic process across uh, disease categories for um, orienting and relating in a different way. And in different ways that with the right inputs and therapeutic support can be much more health promoting as opposed to health demoting. This mini lecture is part of Numinous's Introduction to Psychedelics, which is a free course where we explore the world of psychedelic medicines and their potential as therapeutic tools. Check out the link in the description for more info.